as hard as life may be, and in times of struggle, and as dark as it seems at times, nothing will last forever, and it'll always get better, and then things will get worse again. But it's ever-changing, and things will pass, and people will pass. People come, people go. I've lived in this building for eight years, and I've known this particular woman for eight years. She's just not very sociable. I just know I've spoken to her. I've had, we've ex exchanged hellos. Yesterday, I was on my way downstairs. I offered to get my, my neighbor's mail and get my own mail while I was going down. I was waiting on the elevator, and the elevator door opened, and she was on the elevator, and she was standing almost directly in front of the elevator door, kind of like blocking the door, and there was nobody else on the elevator but her. And she kind of looked at me like a deer in the headlight kind of look, and she was like, uh, uh, well, um, how about I just send the elevator back up for you? And it kind of flabbergasted me. Usually I have a comeback, but it caught me so off guard because I didn't expect that from her. I was very blown away, and I was like, uh, oh, okay. Um, so I just waited for the next elevator to come. Because the first thing I think is because you're, I'm fat. Um, probably that's a defense thing. Probably maybe it's because it's a true thing. I don't know why she wouldn't have wanted me on the elevator with her. I've ridden the elevator with her before with her and other people. Um, so I know I'm big, but I'm not too big to fit on an elevator. Um, so it really, really hurt my feelings more than I probably should have let it. And it's funny that I would let something like that hurt my feelings when I'm on the internet and I put myself out there and I get some really hateful, critical comments that don't affect me, but I guess because this is real life, Real life hurts worse than the internet. So that left me feeling really self-conscious about myself. I decided to go and get a snack out of the machine. My mindset was to eat because I wanted to eat the feelings away. So I got a little like cherry cheese Danish thing out of the vending machine and a little bag of cheese puffs. I felt bad about myself and I still feel horrible about myself. I was really, really close to just saying, forget it, this sucks, I'd rather just eat my feelings and not worry about it. If I wouldn't have been morbidly obese, I could have had this cancer situation taken care of a long time ago and been on with my life. She was okay with getting on the elevator with somebody else, but not with me. Thursday, I had a really big, horrible binge. The biggest binge I've had so far this year. I had, I ordered a large pizza, a large thin crust pizza, a two liter of Pepsi, and a dozen chocolate chip cookies. I was also given a half of a strawberry cheesecake and a half of a custard pie. And in the course of the day, I ate all of that. I feel worthless, I feel ashamed, and I wonder if I will ever succeed. I'm going to keep trying because I don't have anything else. It's either this or dying, and 
I don't want to die. This week in my building, we had somebody on my floor, a gentleman passed away. Thinking about death and dying kind of triggers my OCD side and makes me kind of paranoid and it makes me start thinking about death and dying and medical conditions and I just, my brain works over time and that triggers anxiety for me. I usually lack the motivation to try if it doesn't come easy and if I don't see immediate results, I get frustrated and I give up. So I did attend my first OA meeting yesterday, my first one in a very long time. Um, yesterday I felt kind of like I was struggling and I needed some extra support and I thought what better way to do it and is it an OA meeting? So I did attend one. It was a 12-step um, program and that's something that I definitely need to start working on again and I ordered my materials, my workbook, my 12-step book. I'm going to start journaling from that. And then my, lastly, I have my therapy appointment on Thursday, and I will let you guys know how that goes. Dear Dad, it still bothers me that I can't remember when it all started. Who was that little girl that trusted everyone? Who slept through the night without waking up to terrifying nightmares? Who didn't find comfort in food? For the longest time because of you, I thought I was unlovable, broken, damaged, and stupid. It took me over 20 years to even begin to talk about the secret that I kept for you. I want you to know that I hated you for many years. I want you to know that I feel sorry for you. You are the one that's unlovable. I want you to know that I no longer give you permission to control my emotions. I want you to know that I don't hate you anymore. For my own sanity and my own well-being, I forgive you. People pick at everything when you are on YouTube. Every video I, have, I put out, there are YouTube doctors, lawyers, psychiatrists, life coaches, spiritual advisors. Everybody thinks that they're a professional and they know what's best for you. I've been feeling very stressed and very not like myself. Since I haven't been feeling well, it's been very difficult for me because I find myself getting irritated at comments very easily. and. That is because of my depression and about my anxiety. The answers I was giving to people on YouTube of some of the comments that the comments normally don't bother me, but I found a couple, some of the comments were bothering me. And like I said, it was nothing about the comment itself. It was my state of mind dealing with the things in my life. And it was just, that's where I was taking it out at. And on, I was even taking it out on someone in my real life Oh, there's been a few people that have been quite worried that I wear the same shirt all the time. I have three shirts like this and I just ordered a fourth. And I don't feel I have to justify it, but I'm just throwing it out there because I've seen more than one person comment about me wearing the same shirt all the time. People think that I don't leave my apartment very much and I'm not sure where that assumption came from. 
Um, I know that I talked about in the past I was a shut-in for many years, but that's not the case anymore. I do leave my apartment. We have a common area in our building and a lot of people just go there to socialize. People that start drama are not adults. They are acting like children. I have no tolerance or patience for any of that. If you disagree with me or you're critical of me, I will not delete you or block you. I am perfectly okay with being criticized. I may feel may feel or act defensive at first, probably because if I do that, there is a reason or there's some truth behind it. There is still talk about in my comments about I'm not losing enough weight and I'm not being honest about what I'm eating. I don't know how much people expect me to lose. In the end, if I lie about what I eat, it's not hurting you guys at all. It's hurting me. Even if I eat a large pizza and I don't tell you guys, I'm the one that's paying for that. You guys will not be hurt by that at all. It's me I'm hurting. So I'm not obligated to tell you guys anything or everything. So I weighed first thing this morning and I was just so happy. I was texting everyone and messaging everyone and telling everyone my good news. I weighed in at 517.8, which is a 23.3 pound loss since January the 7th. And I am so happy about that. Um, also a little scared too, because I am now just 17 pounds away from being able to have an MRI and probably start radiation treatment for my uterine cancer. Um, this week has been very difficult for me and when I tell you I've had a difficult week I'm not making excuses. Um, it has not been a good end of the week I will just tell you that and um, I don't know if I would actually consider what I've eaten as a binge other than just not good food and definitely not logging the calories and definitely not within the calories to be honest with you guys so that makes me wonder are you really serious about losing weight and in my head yes I am I know why I have to lose weight and I know what I need to do to lose weight but do I really want to the answer to that is yes and no. If I could just have a pass and have my surgery now and be more mobile now, I would continue eating whatever I want, whenever I want, and however much of it I wanted. Today I'm going to start a 21 day series and hopefully I'm going to commit to completing it. We all know that I have troubles with commitment and carrying through with them. So what this is going to consist of is every morning I'm going to put out a video and there will be a reading as well as a set of journaling questions and some affirmations and some meditations and I will read those all to you. The book that I'm going to be using is called Mirror Work by Louise Hay, 21 Days to Heal Your Life. And then I'm also going to be using these. These are the Universe Has Your Back cards, and these are just positive affirmations. Um, so my general practitioner is the one who 
prescribed my antidepressant and he is more concerned with my depression than my other issues, my endometriosis and uterine cancer because he says that if the depression is so bad that I'm unable to function in life that I'm not going to be able to lose weight anyhow, so I need to take care of the depression. Then when I talk to my oncologist, gynecologist, she says that I should be more concerned about losing weight than the depression, so they kind of just, both of them, it's just, it's been back and forth. Then I go see my therapist, and my therapist has another opinion. So I have three medical professionals in my life all giving me different sets of advice on what to do and how to fix my life. So it's been confusing. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I tried to go get a candy bar out of the vending machine because I was just craving something sweet. I know myself well enough to know that it has nothing to do with this particular plan. It is any kind of a food plan. I have no desire to count calories. I have no desire to eat healthy. I just want fast food, junk food, and lots of it. And left to my own devices, that's what I would eat. The official first week I lost, well just over the first week I lost a little over 17 pounds and I was feeling really good. I am 492.8 today. I am so ecstatic right now. This is the first time in probably six, almost seven years that I have been under 500 pounds. and. I honestly sometimes didn't think this was going to happen again because I was so discouraged. So that is a total loss in the 21 days of 31.2 pounds. So now I'm going to be able to have an MRI, my next appointment with my gynecologist, my oncologist, gynecologist, I can schedule that. I have never found a method of eating, a food plan, or anything that has worked for me so well. Probably a lot of it in the beginning is water weight because I had been eating really poorly before I started. So that probably contributed to a good bit of the weight that I released. I have never, on any kind of a food plan I have been on or diet that I've tried, I have never lost 17 pounds in one week. And it just motivates me to keep moving forward. I had a disagreement with somebody close to me. I found out that they had been lying to me. And then I had a disagreement with somebody else. I, that put me in a really bad mood. I got, I guess you could say, triggered by another situation. I Sometimes I don't know how to deal with situations and people that are difficult to deal with. That on top of everything else, just, I felt horrible. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I wanted to binge really, really badly. But luckily, I guess you could say luckily, I have nothing in my apartment that I would consider a binge to binge on. I got angry because I didn't have anything to binge on. And I had planned on ordering a pizza. I was just in that place where I was fed up, so I made myself a drink. I made myself a whiskey sour because I didn't have the food to give me that fix and that comfort, so I decided to have a drink. So, on Wednesday evening, I was emotionally upset, and my whole body was aching. I had a headache. I was really thirsty. So, I took my temperature, and I did have a fever. It was 100.4. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I did have cereal a couple days. When I was not feeling well, I was craving cereal really bad. So I bought a box of Reese's Puffs. Around Thursday evening, my anxiety kicked in. My anxiety all centers around 
that there is something wrong with me and when I feel just the slightest thing wrong with me I blow it out of proportion and I think I'm dying. I was positive that I was dying of something I didn't exactly know what but in my head I was dying I'm a little hungry and it's the early time of the month and I'm feeling very stressed, very emotional, um, very angry, angry for no reason at all, just very angry, hormonal anger I think, just not good. I want to eat so bad, I'm so hungry. Today is my fasting day, but I'm not going to last till dinner time. A lot of people have accused me of being fake because I'm always happy and smiling and not showing any other kinds of emotions, but I think I am just like everybody else. I get mad, I yell. As I just did this morning, I had a big fight with someone. Um, this isn't me falling off of my diet. This isn't me stopping my weight loss journey. This isn't... I'm not dying, I'm not dead, I'm just dealing with a lot emotionally. I need to take care of the emotional things before it affects my physical things because usually when I get upset my first instinct is to turn to food and being completely honest with you guys, I am wanting to turn to food really bad right now. I just yelled and cr cried and screamed and carried on for probably about an hour this morning dealing with a relationship that is very difficult in my life and I'm sure people have comments and advice on how to deal with those things whether I am dealing with them the way other people approve of or not isn't of my concern for a long time I blamed the other person for what I was going through of for everything at the end of the day it's my fault because I allow the things to happen I missed my therapy appointment this morning and I missed that appointment because I was partaking in drama my relationship is not open for discussion I have my relationship the way I have it and nobody has to be okay with it it worked works or worked whatever for me and for the other person and that's all that's important nobody has to understand it nobody has to approve of it I don't know how somebody that just watches me upload a 20 minute video every day thinks they know what I do the other other times during the day I am having a really hard time with anxiety and depression. I'm not feeling like myself at all. Well, the beginning of last week, I started struggling really bad with depression. Um, the end of the week before that, I had a meltdown and I called a family member and they came and talked to me and kind of talked me off the ledge. It was after my therapy appointment. Right now, at this stage in my life, I need help and it's more help than just therapy alone so I did see my doctor and I am currently taking antidepressant medication and honestly right now I don't love myself there are certain situations that I feel I deserve in my life because I I feel that I am not a good person I've been off of my food plan, off of any kind of a food plan, and it's just been balls to the wall, eating whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, and the last three days have been really, really bad. I've eaten a lot of food before during a binge, but I don't remember eating continuously 
for three days like I have. I weighed myself this morning and just in three days I've gained five pounds. To be honest, I don't know when I'm going to feel okay with telling everybody what I weigh. I'm very embarrassed that I've gained so much weight back in such a short amount of time. I have not done well, but I have not given up. I won't give up, and I feel good about the path that I'm on again. Life isn't perfect. So I'm trying to just do what I can to stay above water and keep swimming and keep floating. Jelly beans, a container of the Cadbury cream eggs, a Twix, I have a six pack of Pepsi, and I have half of a key lime pie. So this is the stuff I'm going to get rid of. So I did plan to do exercises every day, every maybe, hopefully every morning. Uh, that's gonna be my goal, is to do them every morning. The thing is, it can only get better from here. So, this is the worst that it can get for me. Yesterday we talked about the really tough stuff. Um, my childhood, the abuse in my childhood, and things that I just don't like talking about revolve, revolving around my abuse and my dad. So one of the events that happened in my childhood that was, uh, there's a lot of things that were pretty traumatizing but one of the things that had a lasting effect on my life. I don't remember the circumstances, what led up to this, but I remember standing at the top of our basement steps, and I remember standing there and the basement door was open. I don't even know how old I was, maybe eight or nine. And I think my dad wanted me to go downstairs and I was afraid or I didn't want to, because that was one of the places my abuse happened regularly. Um, he kicked me down the basement stairs with a pair of steel-toed shoes, boots on. I remember landing at the bottom of the stairs and just for, it, in my head, it felt like a long time because um, I wasn't able to move. I'm sure now looking back it was only a few seconds, but it seemed like a long time. The story that was told to my mom was that I just fell down the stairs, but in reality I was kicked down the stairs. Having to talk about that, and then of course in therapy you have to talk about how you feel about that now, and all that kind of stuff, and it's just memories that I don't like dredging up. There is a part of me that knows that as I lose weight, I will have to have surgery, I will have to have radiation, I will have to have all these things in and that terrifies me. I don't know, part of me I think sabotages myself because if I don't lose weight I won't have to have treatment and I know that I can put off the inevitable. But I also know that if I put off the inevitable of having surgery that I'm increasing the risks of dying. Which scares me. 
but it's something that I've been preparing myself for since I very first heard of my cancer diagnosis. So yesterday I had an appointment with my nutritionist and we'll just say that my nutritionist was not pleased with me. Um, I was not following any of the suggestions or the meal plans or the any kind of guidelines that she had provided for me. As far as my nutritionist thought, she thought I was still following the plan that she had set up for me and that we had agreed on what was going to work for me and what my goals were. And uh, I didn't reach any of those goals in the two months that I had last seen her. So I had to make a decision whether I wanted to continue on with the obesity code and doing what I wanted to do or if I was going to follow her advice and the medical professionals advice and do what was medically best for me my dietitian well nutritionist and my doctor they both feel that it is in my best interest to follow the advice of my nutritionist and not do the obesity code and not do keto i decided that i am going to continue on with what my nutritionist had set up for me. I'm going to stay within her guidelines. It, a lot of it has been a fear of what people will think. I was getting into the mindset of if I don't have a loss of what people expect, I'll disappoint people and I hate disappointing people. What we have to understand is weight loss isn't a race. This journey is for myself, my health, and my well-being. I am literally in a fight, in a battle, or a race to save my life, literally. Like I said, it is 1,800 calories a day, three meals a day, two snacks if necessary. I got these from Amazon, they're each two pounds. It's funny how just an added two pounds makes it feel different. So I'm gonna be using those during my little exercise routine this morning. It turned out to be a big old craptastic day for me. I was feeling pretty depressed and emotional. Today is a Mother's Day. My mom passed away almost nine years ago now, and it's always a pretty rough day for me. I wish I could tell people that when you lose your mom, it gets easier, but it doesn't really get easier. You just learn how to deal with the pain in a different way. I've often said people are like, oh, aren't you afraid of this or aren't you afraid of that or your greatest fear. I have no other greatest fears because I have no other greatest fear in life because my greatest fear has already happened and that was losing my mom. So, I'm trying not to sabotage myself. I am very proud I have not binged in two, over two weeks now. I have been on my plan for over a week now of what my dietitian recommended. Full disclosure, I have not binged. I have been under my calories. On Wednesday though, I did order a pizza and I did have four slices of thin crust cheese pizza. I didn't binge. Um, I definitely should not have had pizza, it was not. A good food choice it was four pieces of pizza I was still within my calories bad food choice but nothing is ruined and everything is fine there's no binge so
Taking this time off has been the best decision I have made in a very long time. I have needed to focus on myself and YouTube was a big distraction. I have lost 10, 20, 30 pounds during the year, this past year that I've been on YouTube, but I've gained it all back plus. And that's because I stopped working on myself. And right now my weight loss is more important than being able to speak to a camera. So I'll first of all, I'll start with the video of the person claiming to be my dad. I was curious what this person who claimed to be my dad had to say. Hello, my name is Life Vibe Jen's dad, and today I am here to defend myself against the false accusations that have been levied against me. I will be using a text-to-speech program to avoid revealing who I am until this nightmare is over. My daughter has claimed that I molested her as a child, saying that I used bologna sandwiches to bribe her into silence. The disgusting nature of these claims are matched only by their ridiculousness. Her stories could not be further from the truth. Jen was brought up in a loving home, where her insatiable hunger was catered to night and day. Jen often told lies to get her away, and when she was caught in a lie she would throw a tantrum and behave as if we were the ones who had done something wrong. This would go on, until the rift Jen created between myself and my late wife ended in divorce. As if it wasn't bad enough that I lost my family, I now discover that she has been blaming me for the problems she has created and is using me as a catalyst to grow her channel. If you are familiar with the DD show My 600 Pound Life, Amber Lynn Reed, or other fat YouTube people, you know that many of them are compulsive liars who will use any excuse to explain their addiction to food. The food these people eat is chemically designed in laboratories by scientists working to manipulate the brain into consuming as much of their products as possible. These obese people would have you believe that they eat to ease emotional pains, going as far as to lie about to justify their addiction. They usually get away with such lies, because the person they are lying about is dead, the person never existed, or is likely to never hear the news of the rumors created about them. Unfortunately for Jen I am now aware of the lies she has been telling about me. People in our hometown have heard these stories, and my relationships with many people, both personal and professional, have been ruined. These claims are very damaging and in order to protect myself I am forced to take legal action. A cease and desist letter will be sent soon. Further legal repercussions will commence, unless these lies are addressed. You still have time to make this right, Jen. I'm pretty sure that we all know that that is not my dad. My dad is 80-ish years old and in poor health. From what I've heard from other family members, I can pretty much assure you that he's not making and uploading videos to YouTube. And the people that have left comments on my channel about me lying about being abused as a child, they didn't live in my house. They don't know me. They didn't grow up with me. They weren't around me. They don't they don't know me. People are saying that I do not have cancer, that I am lying about it. I was definitely diagnosed with stage one cancer, uterine cancer, as well as endometriosis. So when I hear people saying that I'm lying about being diagnosed with cancer, it's very offensive to me. My mom and my grandma both died of cancer. My grandma died of ovarian cancer, my mom died of renal cell carcinoma um, that had metastasized to everywhere in her body in a matter of months. My grandma lived years with hers. Um, she suffered very, very horribly and so did my mom. My mom um, ended up having seizures in her last days. So, because the cancer had went to her brain in a matter of months. I would never, ever lie about a condition that my mom and my grandma died of. I think that is the most horrible thing anybody could ever do. So when people say that I'm lying about that, it is very troublesome to me and it does hurt my feelings. For a very long time, I did not want to get better. I wanted to die because I just wanted to be with my mom. But. In the process of getting therapy and working on myself, I no longer want to die. I want to live. And that's why I am doing the things necessary for me to get better. And sometimes that has to, like I said, that has to happen in private and it can't happen 
on YouTube where there is negativity. reason I just didn't feel that that was what was right for me. I did not go back and see my dietitian in June. I did see my doctor. I have seen my doctor a couple times in the last month and I did let him know when I just told you that I didn't feel right on this plan. The only plan that I felt I felt my best in was the obesity code. So he and I have agreed that that is what I will be doing. I trust him, so I'm going to listen to what he thinks is best. So that is what I decided to do is the obesity code. Now I'm in a better place. I'm nowhere near in a great place, but I'm in a much better place. I'm working the steps. I have a sponsor, and I'm going to meetings, seeking God, and doing everything that I need to do and also following the obesity code plan and I'm feeling a lot better. I do want to start the way in Wednesdays today and start moving forward. Alright guys, here goes nothing. Hello, it's ready. Five hundred and fifteen point eight pounds. Um, some people have pointed out that when I was uploading my daily food vlogs that that's not all I was eating or I'd be losing weight. Um, there were days that some of the sum of what I was eating was exactly what I was showing what I was eating. But what I wasn't showing were the binges. McDonald's, pizza, those types of things. And I didn't show them because I was ashamed of them. And that doesn't make it right. I know that that, that was lying. I, I get that and I admit that freely. I had somebody comment and they brought up the fact that I never apologized to my viewers it's about being less than truthful, lying, omitting, covering up about my binges and about gaining so much weight back. That video was an extremely hard video for me to make. I understand people why people were upset and not happy with me. I completely understand that. But the hiding it was because of the shame of that I felt. Binging is very shameful for me and I am ashamed of it. Like the days when I had showed what I was eating, I would definitely eat all that food that I showed and then I would also order from McDonald's. So like I said, I've been binge free for 16 days. I am dealing with a couple emotional things in my life right now. Um, and my first impulse is to turn to food. But I'm very proud to say that that has not been the case. Five hundred and fifteen seven point eight pounds. That is a three pound exactly lost for the week. I am a little disappointed in that. Um, I had hoped for a bigger number, maybe a double digit number, but it is what it is. I know that I have been on track. I have been eating low carb and fasting. I have to just hang in there and not get discouraged because this is where I get discouraged very easily and I want to give up because it's not what I expect. So I have another subscription box for you guys, but wait, it is actually something healthy. So what it's called is Misfits. The first thing I pulled out was kale and it's not in a bag all wrapped up and it's wet and soggy oh it looks like spinach perhaps 
Oh, these are summer squash. Two little heads of broccoli. Two bunches of celery. I got a bag of spinach for the spinach dip. I got a head of cabbage. All right, so my store had bran flakes on sale this week. You're gonna see a tail here pretty soon. So I've had a really good week. My food has been on point. I've had no binging, and I'm happy to say that I am now 23 days abstinent. I have decided that for my first 50 pounds, when that happens, I am going to let you guys decide what color I should dye my hair. And I'm not talking about a light brown or a red or a blonde. I'm talking pink, blue, green, purple, some wild color, I'm gonna dye my hair. When I reach 100 pounds lost, I'm gonna get a tattoo. And I will take you guys with me when I get the tattoo. I'm very excited about this, and that is going to be my treats instead of treating myself to some kind of treat food. Today's video is the Keto Cauliflower Crust Pizza. I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle some over the top. A few people were interested in the cabbage steak recipe. In this container, I have melted two tablespoons of butter ranch seasoning mix. So I'm just going to sprinkle this over each. Here it is, plated up. This is one of the medium sized ones. As of today, I'm 29 days abstinent. Tomorrow will be my 30 days of abstinence. Every day that goes by that I choose abstinence over binging, over practicing my addiction, I am so thankful, grateful, and relieved to be not practicing my addiction. So that is a 0.6 pounds loss since last Wednesday. The thing of it is, I'm going to tell you what happened and why it's only a 0.6. On Saturday morning, I was at 5.45 even. Then Sunday, my building had our 4th of July picnic. It's portioned out, they give you a portion and you eat what they give you. Um, so I mistakenly thought it would be okay if I would just eat that portion, there would be no binging involved, it would be just one meal and then I would go back and everything would be fine and then I wouldn't gain. I was wrong. At the barbecue, I had barbecue ribs, I had potato salad, I had broccoli casserole, a fruit salad, and a piece of apple pie. So obviously that was very heavy in carbs. That was a 2.8 pound gain from Saturday morning until today, but still 0.6 pound loss from last week. It was a mistake that I learned from. Usually if I was doing any other kind of a food plan, I don't think that that would have affected me so much, but seeing as how it was heavy in carbs and I had been this is my first attempt at fat bombs and these are going to be chocolate peanut butter fat bombs it's 100% peanut butter with cocoa powder so I and this is what they look like this recipe made 70 fat bombs so let's try it and see what it tastes like Not bad. Not bad at all. A lot of people were concerned that the fat bombs, I was going to binge on them, and I absolutely did not binge on them. I think I've had probably about five of them, and the rest are still in my freezer. I'm still in ketosis, I have not binged, and I'm still losing, and I'm doing very well with keto. Um, I truly did take some days off and I needed it. I was feeling very overwhelmed and like I've said before, when I start feeling overwhelmed, 
that's when it's time to pull back and focus on myself. Um, one of the biggest things that I'm dealing with is one of my close friends, someone that I'm very close with, she's dealing with a very serious illness and things do not look good for her. The thought of losing her has been very, very overwhelming to me. And that is basically what made me decide to take a step back from YouTube. If I die before I lose enough weight, then I have only myself to blame for that. <laughs>